Hey, experts, we've got something really awesome that we do here at Coffee Experts Club, and that's called the My First Drive Through Dot Coffee Masterclass. So if you're opening your next coffee shop, I think a lot of times you may think to yourself, I know what goes into opening a coffee shop. I've been doing this for years, but maybe you've been doing it for somebody else. And maybe this is your first option of starting a coffee shop on your own. Or maybe you don't know anything about coffee and you're just like, I'm looking for a good investment opportunity. Starting a coffee shop seems like a good place to put it and you're going to enter into it. But what you don't know is all the things that you don't know, right? And so what we've done with this masterclass is taken behind the scenes how you find your first location, what you need to be thinking about in finding a location. We give you a gift in the masterclass where it's a step-by-step -step process of how you're opening your coffee shop, the different checkpoints you need from coming up with your plans and talking with the city and then negotiating a lease. And then how do you build a team and what are the different pieces you need to be thinking about? It's a great masterclass, door-to-door, -door, start to finish completely free on opening up your next coffee drive through So check it out. It's at myfirstdrivethrough.coffee and it's a great masterclass. You won't regret it. We'll see you on the inside there. Welcome to the Coffee Experts Club, where we discuss all of the insights, expertise, and drama that goes into making your passion your profession. Our hosts, Aaron, Ben, and Drew, are three coffee experts who have taken their coffee experience and turned it into true expertise. They have consulted with major coffee brands throughout the United States and beyond, providing operations expertise and growth strategy for drive through openings, multiple locations, and everything in between. So brew yourself a cup and hang out a bit with the Coffee Experts Club. Coffee Experts Club, that's what I'm talking about. Good to see you gentlemen today. How's the day? Good day, good day. It is, it's actually a great day today. Yeah. Yeah. It's been nice time here too. Fall weather, <laughs> fall weather in the Pacific Northwest because a lot different than the fall weather in Belize. Let me tell you what. I know, I woke up this morning, I was like, oh, it's cold outside. Burr, burr. I, went, I had my best on and went out rucking this morning, right? It was like 30, and I'm thinking, Drew, what was it like when you woke up this morning, like 85 and sweltering? Yeah, it was a cool 80 degree. Two sweaters out there, so sweaters are 80 degrees. Talking to our little marketing guy, we had a marketing L10 this morning, Ben, me, and Drew, and our gal that's helping with marketing on there, who's just like a college kid in uni, you know, but is studying marketing, you know, so she's helping us with some of our socials and some of our marketing pushes down there, just getting in with the locals and stuff. She goes, yeah, I was a little bit cold this morning when I woke up and I'm like, honey, like, there's just no way. Like, but I just, I know where you're from. There's no way that's even true. So coffee experts, thanks for joining us here. If you're thinking about starting coffee, you know, somebody that's starting coffee or you just love coffee. This is the place to be coffee experts club, mm -hmm. get to interview some great guests, get to talk through some incredible topics. Today, we have an amazing gal who's got a really great coffee expression in Battle Mountain, Nevada. And let me tell you what, I stumbled on the, this little gym. So I was driving the interstate, cruising from Red Rocks. I had just taken in a concert with my son, and then we we're heading north up to Montana to do annual planning and bring in the team in there, which I know both of you guys were actually at for a couple mm -hmm. of the different companies. But I was cruising through Nevada, and I, I, we had to get coffee, and I was going to stop at the Mav because I like Maverick. I, I, I'll tolerate their coffee. And then my son said, wait a minute, is that a coffee house right there? And I'm, and you know us, like we're always going to choose independence. And so it was just alongside the highway. I wasn't expecting it, but we walked in and I'm like, this lady knows what she's doing. Like the coffee was great. The, had her own printed cups, like was just cutting edge and all the stuff she was, she was doing. So I totally stalked her and I'm like, Hey, would you be willing to come and let us interview you on Coffee Experts Club? So I'm going to bring to stage Melanie Cruz and the coffee house is called Press Coffee House. So with no further ado. Melanie, thanks so much for joining us today on Hello. Coffee Experts Club. <laughs> well, yes. So Melanie, tell us a little bit about it. So Battle Mountain, Nevada, like people, when they're searching destinations to start coffee, that's probably not the place that comes up top on the list. So tell us a little bit how you chose to start coffee and it's still pretty new, right? So like about a year and a half, maybe tell us a little bit about your adventure. Yeah. So the coffee shop for us is about a year, half and a half new. That location has actually been there for like about the last 20 years, believe it or I not. So yeah, Battle Mountain's not going to be anybody's like place to go. Um, <laughs> but not a tourist, not a tourist trap. No, it's a beautiful spot though. It was great. Yeah. So, you know, I grew up here and was like raised here and I actually worked there 10 years ago. Oh, wow. So I worked at that coffee shop 10 years ago. You know, fast forward, I get married and go to Arizona and move there for about three years or so. And then we came back and the shop was up for sale Yeah. after we moved back. And so 
I kind of, you know, nudge my husband and I'm like, hey, would she buy it? And he was like, no, no, no. And I was like, but we should, you know? And he was like, no, just doesn't see it because he just never has work in that kind of field. He, yeah. he mines. So, you know, if you look up out of Mount Nevada, primarily a mining town along with probably farming, you yeah. know, things mm-hmm. like that. And so he's just like, no, no. And so I'm like, well, what do I do to get my hands on this coffee shop? And yeah. so I, I talked to his mom. And I was like, hey. Yeah, yeah sister. You're like, <laughs> this <laughs> this yeah, I was like, hey, what do you think about the coffee shop being up for sale? And, you know, she has lived here for a majority of her life, I would assume, too. And, and she's like, I think you guys would be great. And I was like, mm, do you think so? For real, though? Right. And she's like, yeah. So, you know, with the help of them, they got got us started. They, they own a couple of businesses as well. So definitely helpful to have them around. But yeah, we, we ended up taking it on. They helped us kind of with the beginning of like how to like take over a shop or, yeah. or a business, I would say, because that's kind of yeah. what they've done in the past. But uh, yeah, after the keys were handed to us, it was like, okay, here you go. Like, it's all you. <laughs> So, you know, the knowledge I had from 10 years ago kind of slowly started to trickle in. And so I started to remember like drinks and numbers and ounces and things like that. So it was very helpful. We kept all the staff that came with the shop. What's awesome. Um, Love that part, but they slowly started to leave. Of course, Beth. It's new, right? It's it's new. So it's going to always be that transition air. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, since then I've gotten my own like group of girls and they've been great so a lot of i would say a lot of the girls we have now have been with me for the last year so i haven't had a lot of turnaround yeah it's it's been good it's all scary but it's been good oh super scary like don't get me wrong like (laughs) but we understand like obviously we're talking to people all the time and interviewing folks and i think that you know everybody kind of fakes a little bit till they make it you know what i mean of like man, I hope this thing won't work. So like, you're just a little bit stressed about it, you know? So that's, that's super common. But yeah, yeah just all my ideas slowly trickling in there and, and. Was maybe... it press before or was that your own name? And like, you came up with this whole thing and the branding and everything? Yeah, we rebranded and everything. Wow. It used to be called Baker's Brew. And it had that name based off of like the previous family that owned it. That was their last name. Yeah. The Baker's part. So, you know, we couldn't keep that. It, uh, it just the wouldn't marketing. be ours. So your marketing is beautiful. Like the logo know. work and like your mm-hmm. printed cups and like the the feel and look of the shop when you walk in. So warm, so inviting. The coffee was delicious. I cruise a lot of places. I check out a lot of coffee. I'm always nerdy like this and like looking around and seeing like, do they have their own energy drink? Like, are they are they using powder versus malt for their their blendings? Like, what what are they doing over there? Like, I'm like, because we're always trying to think of ways to help people cut costs too, you know? And I was super impressed. Everything you were doing, I thought, it looked great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I would definitely give a lot of, like, I guess a huge shout out to our roaster. He's been amazing. So yes. I think when it comes to coffee, if, if you don't have a good roaster or like a good relationship maybe with your roaster, no. I don't I don't see how you could like manage to have like good quality coffee Um, because no. he he's helps a lot. Like he goes above and beyond. He roasts for us and he's out of Elko, Nevada. But not only does he do that, he like makes sure that our machine and like our grinder and all that are always dialed in and everything so that we're always pulling like the best shots. And he's like super nerdy. So like it's kind of cool because he yeah, has got a lot. Yeah, that's what you want. I don't think I've met a roaster yet who wasn't just like an uber nerd when it came to coffee. They're all, they're all, all they're new little scientists. It was all new to me. And I was just like, wow this guy's way into it and then What's... and then it it makes sense why you know because yep. later on you're like oh that's all good stuff to know so like learning the little things that he's taught us has helped us too especially when people all start to ask questions you know there's people that maybe have like a larger scope of coffee like even more than myself mm-hmm. and it's kind of intimidating when you're getting asked and if you don't know the answers you're like sure. You know, are they going to walk out of the door or? Yep. No, I totally get that. I'm curious how hard it was to transition. Like when you took the shop over, like, was it hard to transition out of like, okay, I used to be a barista. This all this stuff I, 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 you know, no one did. 
but now like I'm also the business owner. So now I have to like figure out this whole business, running the business side of it. Was that a difficult transition or was it easier? Cause you said your parents own businesses. Did they, did they help out a lot with that? Yeah. So my in-laws own businesses and then it is very helpful that like on my side of the family, we own a couple of businesses. Um, I don't know if you checked out Battle Mountain a little bit more after you found us, but my aunt does own the Mexican restaurant here in town. And just across the street from us is my cousin, and she owns the Hideaway Steakhouse. Love it. Look at you guys just monopolizing the town. We're going to the steak play over. Yeah, no, it's it's fun for sure. But, you know, very proud to have that knowledge. Like, the Mexican restaurant has been around for so long that that was, like, one of my first jobs was, like, bussing tables you know it comes naturally i guess a little bit when it comes to like <laughs> taking on the taking on the like boss role um haven't been easy i've definitely had my ups and downs but it is nice to know that like i did see it growing up so it it does help but you know before taking on the shop i did own my own last studio for seven years so wow. that was also helpful i mean my previous jobs have all been just kind of working up to this, I guess, and it was awesome. it's all helped. First year, it's awesome. I think you're probably one of the first that we've run into or talked to who's like, yeah, like everybody in my family owned, owns businesses, I've owned businesses, this is just like what we do. Oh, yeah, see, and I, I kind of, I like being like behind the scenes kind of sure. too. Yeah, like people in town, like the people that know us know these things, but like no one else would know, you know? Sure. Even at the shop, the girls, it's funny because when the people come in and they like look around and they're like, oh, what a cute like, shop, you know, no one's going to be like, yeah, he's the owner. Like I am like, we don't even know who that is. Like I just work here. I, I just, I'm like, we just work here. You know, I kind of want to hear what people are going to say. Sure. Yeah. If they don't know who I am versus yeah. if you just put me on the spot because it's scary either way. I, you know, you might be like, oh, they should be this or that, you know, and I'm standing right there with a smile on my face. So, that's, yeah, so I, you... I'm definitely more of like, I take it back. You know, I'm, I have some of the girls at the shop, they get asked all the time, oh, do you, do you own this? And they're like, no. You know, <laughs> people assume it's other people sometimes in that shop. So, we that's just kind of like to keep it, I guess under wraps and unless you go through our social media and stuff like there really still isn't that many pictures of me out there but yeah but at or my staff like we we just kind of take pictures of our drinks and that's just kind of about it i like that so that you had your team for about a year everybody who stayed and has not really left or gone anywhere what types of things do you do to promote that type of culture to keep people engaged and, and happy working there well, we're very tight knit, I would say. Like, we take care of each other for sure. The weekday girls, you know, kind of have their own like thing and they work a certain way. And then the weekend girls, I have more high school students kind of running that and some older, you know, out of high school as well. But those are primarily the only girls that have ever left really are the girls that are graduated high school and they're moving out, like they're sure. moving out of town. And so I've only really had to deal with them leaving and then I bring somebody new on and I just hope that they stay. <laughs> and so far it's worked. I actually recently hired my sister. So we'll see how long goes. I know you hear a lot of things like, you know, good and bad, but I've been trying to get around for the last year. You know, like I took the shop over and I was like, you need to come work with me. I, like, you know, I envision this place being amazing. I want you here. But I just recently got my hands on her and hopefully she won't leave me. Yeah, I would say just a positive work environment for a while. I did like newsletters every probably other week, I would say. And I would just highlight good things. I would highlight if we got new reviews. I would highlight any new things that everybody should know. So like you kind of would go back there and you would read this newsletter and it would kind of give you a rundown so you never felt like you were behind on anything. But because I do work there a lot of the time, I kind of was like running out of time to do those newsletters. So I haven't done them in a while, but I would just say like communication from all of us is huge. And they know that I feel like, so they do a good job 
relaying a message if it needs to be, you know, okay. taken from one person to the next, I guess. Great. Thinking of all my friends at Indie Coffee Coalition, just thinking about the hundreds of thousands of dollars we've saved coffee shop owners just like you, who are not franchisees, who are looking for deals on their fat mix and their energy drinks. Why should the franchises get all the deals, right? Indie Coffee Coalition was built with the idea of saving you, the little guy, tons of cash. So if you're a coffee shop owner, you have one to three coffee shops and you're serving blended drinks or energy drinks, we can substantially save you money and keep more money in your pocket. Set up a call. I'd love to talk with you. Indie Coffee Coalition, keep money in your pocket. What do you feel like has been some of the biggest hurdles? Like as far as you, you get there, you have to rebrand the whole thing, right? You have to set it all up. I know like printed cups aren't cheap, right? Like you've made your stuff really, really cute and pretty. You know what I mean? But like realistically, all that cost, that's something that like a consumer doesn't always think about, right? Where they're just like, hey, this is cool. And you're like, yeah, I had to buy a crap ton of these and they weren't shirt cheap per unit. You know, like, yeah, they were like. I, what, what do you feel like were there things that you came into it and you had like big dreams and hopes and you got in and you're like, Shh, this is not what I was expecting. Like have, maybe walk us through that. Cause I think as people listen, I think it's super important to realize anybody that's listening now, think about starting coffee. Everybody gets excited with the dream. Right. But then you get into it and you're like, holy hell, what did I just step into? This is a lot For harder. Sure. This is a lot scarier. Yeah. This is like numbers don't always work. Like things get really tight. Like you have to make some hard decisions and that's not the stuff that you come into it thinking, when you were just a barista slinging drinks and like making people's day and like thanking people as they drove away. And then you got to clock out and drive home and you never thought about the place again. Like that all changes when you become an owner. So maybe some of the hardest things you faced and you're like, this was really tough, but this is how we got through it. And then maybe on the flip side, what are some of the things that you've really loved about running it and really like make you excited, make you feel like this is what makes press really different than other places I've been. So numbers are hard. I definitely looked into a lot of numbers. And then again, you kind of run out of time to do things sometimes. But we also live in the middle of the desert and we have a small space. Like you saw the shop, it's not very big. Yeah. So like I've always taught the girls, you know, everything has a home and, you know, we keep it as stocked as possible and things like that. But like for us, it really isn't easy to go get like, I guess like a box of sleeves if I needed it, you know, or I guess a roll of stickers. Maybe people print their own stickers or something. Same thing. We don't have stores around here like that to just go get a box and do it yourself. Whereas maybe in the city, you do have that option. So you also have to kind of add to your like breakdowns. So like when I was looking at cups and things like that, yeah, like I spent hours and hours looking at like what a cup cost me and like even down to the straw, like what the fruits cost me. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I've gotten printed cups. I have like a U.S. supplier and then I have one overseas. But same thing, you're looking at like, okay, I get, I can get my U.S. cups in about maybe a month or two from when I order them versus yep. like I've done overseas one time and it took like I think it took like four to six months to get here. Uh -huh. And granted, yeah, it was a larger quantity, but because of that, like you're buying so many cups. So at many one cups. Time yeah. That I mean, if you can only imagine, like that shop is not big for the amount of cups I got. So you got stuff in your garage. Like you just you leave those for in your mom's garage, in your aunt's garage, everywhere they've got your stuff. We <laughs> have like shelves and just rows of cups and like we almost have like a mini warehouse because it's That's absolutely big. needed where we're at you know you run out of things and people get upset and so you you just try not to do that too mm -hmm. often is it gonna happen absolutely it's gonna happen but we are trying our best that it don't, doesn't happen and we we definitely have like a little mini warehouse and i'm very proud of it <laughs> i don't know if my husband is but you yeah, know, at this point, not as proud, but we did it. Yes, yeah. So you've made him the warehouse manager, pretty much. That's where. Yeah. Different. So you know, my husband definitely has a full time job in mining, but he helps with a lot of the back end stuff too. He does like payroll for us. You know, he awesome. does runs for me if I need to. You know, that what do you, he does a lot. We both do a lot though. Like, we both do the ice cream machine weekly. It, you know, it's all time consuming stuff that no one wants to do, but you have to do it. And then, yeah, like as far as like servicing anything, he'll do that for us as well. All the, I guess, upgrades that we've done to that shop have been him and his like brother. So, yeah, 
if I haven't hired someone out for it, which like I haven't done that a whole lot, it's been my husband and his brother or, you know, somebody in the family that's going to help and, you know, help us like save some money, I guess. But it's nice because we do have handymen and, you know, like my stepdad's an electrician. So I've saved a lot of money. Never just worry. Never just worry. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Like it, it has worked out. If you don't have resources like that, it's tough. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, I definitely use mine. Yeah. You definitely well, use my resources. And going that route too, then your family's going to learn how to work on the machines. Because going into it, you don't know what you don't know. And then suddenly you're elbow deep in the ice cream machine, the espresso machine, or the grinder. And That's where you go from, yeah, that's where you go from like, was it hard to do, you know, just being the barista to like owning? Yeah, you don't know any of the back end stuff until you own, <laughs> own something. Until um, something and breaks and you're like, oh, wait, somebody has to fix it. <laughs> yeah. And when we took on that shop, I mean, we're almost two years in and we've replaced so many things. Like we've gotten new blenders since we took over. We've gotten new espresso machines since we took over. We've gotten a grinder, a puck press. I mean, an ice machine, ice cream machine. Like we've dumped so much money back into that building. It's it's all sickening a little bit. Yeah. Well, but yeah, bad, I think it, it makes me really proud because we know that we'll actually take and maintain these mm -hmm. things, you know, whereas some of the stuff that came with the building, we're like, how is this still running? How is it? <laughs> it was man, definitely it's... on its last leg, you know, and, and we had to just kind of, yeah. you know, replace it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Day three, grand opening down in Belize, our second location. And I mean, we had had just a killer grand opening. It's it's a totally new concept down there. Nobody's, they don't have drive through on the island. Like there's not one other drive through on the island. We're the drive through, right? It's the craziest thing, right? But things that work so well here in the States, we're just taking down there and, and, and going after Americans when they're traveling, right? It's the whole business yeah. model. But it's like day three, we had just killed on grand opening, like with lines wrapped around the building, everything's golf carts, right? So it's not even cars, right? It's like golf carts wrapped down the building, down the street, right? So it was a great grand opening. Day three, I'm getting on a plane, getting ready to fly home. Drew's going to stay down there and just get the team situated for the next month or so. And Drew calls me and he goes, bro, the espresso machine just went down. And I'm like, holy, what the hell? And so I had to put my wife on a plane to fly back home. And I had to drive back to our other location an hour and a half away back in the interior to get the back a machine and get it back to the island but you know you just never know what you're going to be up against until you're up against and then that's why i just snickered when drew was talking about you never know machines until you become the owner because drew's part of the machine that he's had in there and had to take it all the way apart and get down the fine pieces and get replacements and just like you like we're in belize like anything that you want to ship down there takes three weeks to get there so you better hope to god that you have enough stuff because right? there's not a lot in country either so yeah it's, yeah it's, it's insane people and then it's just that's where, like, you learn patience, I guess, too. Like, yeah. it's so crazy when you run out of one syrup, and that's the one syrup that person just has to have, you know? Yeah. It's insane. It's just... That magically becomes the most popular drink of the day. You're like, oh, sorry, I'm not, every time. sorry, I'm out. Every time. And then another thing we learn to do is just not talk about a certain something or, like, like, you know, in the mornings, we know we have our typical morning rushes before school or right after kids are being dropped off. And we'll be like, oh, wow, that was, there was no rush today. And as soon as you say something, here you the list just coming at you and you're doing lists and lists and lists and more lists. That's very But okay. we love it. We just try not to say it out loud because, you know. Be careful what you went for, I guess. Remember. I'm speaking into existence. Literally, yeah. It. Hey, last couple of minutes. Thank you so much again for being here with us. Such an mm -hmm. honor to have you on the show. Any final words? Like there, there were, there's some Melanie out there that's dreaming about something that sees an opportunity, right? And and you're you're speaking now to them based upon what you've learned now. What's the advice you'd give them? Somebody that's dreaming about coffee, somebody that's wanting to start their own thing, one that has this desire in their heart. Maybe they they've worked for somebody else and they're like, no, no, it's my turn. It's my time. I'm going to step into this. What would you speak to future Melanie that you've now gained having lived it over the past almost two years? I would say play it safe because I know I have. <laughs> Just take what you can and take it as it comes, I guess, because it's going to be different for everybody. But 
I, it's definitely doable. And be, just be patient, I guess, with the process. Because there's been times where I'm like, why are we not where I thought we would be, you know? And and then you forget about how far you come. Because we really, we really have come far, a long way. So. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Mm-hmm. Beautiful coffee shop. It was a great little supply, surprise for me driving the interstate to stop in and see something so amazing. So kudos to you. You should be proud of that. Thanks for joining us here on Coffee Experts Club. And Ben, Drew, always great to have you. All of our listeners, thanks for tuning in this week. And we'll see you next week here on our Coffee Experts Club. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. For those of you who are looking to become a coffee expert yourself, we offer an incredible, thorough training online for opening your first coffee drive through at www.myfirstdrivethru.coffee. Hey, coffee experts, those of you running independent coffee shops, you're always looking for ways that you can drop your costs. And we here at the Coffee Experts Club really understand that. And so we've started something called Indie Coffee Coalition. And what it's designed to do is to drop your costs on two of the things that you're probably experiencing the highest sales volume in your store. And that is energy drink and frat mix. Those two line items, we've created our own products and are offering you those products at a reduced cost so that you can cut out the Red Bull of America, you can cut out the main lines of energy drinks that you're doing and serve your own energy drink at a reduced cost on a line item that you're probably already making a lot of sales on anyway. The best way that you can grow sales is by dropping your costs and maintaining a current volume. So check us out at IndieCoffee.co and we'll love to tell you more there. Hey experts, we've got something really awesome that we do here at Coffee Experts Club and that's called the MyFirstDriveThru.Coffee Masterclass. So if you're opening your next coffee shop, I think a lot of times you may think to yourself, I know what goes into opening a coffee shop. I've been doing this for years, but maybe you've been doing it for somebody else. And maybe this is your first option of starting a coffee shop on your own. Or maybe you don't know anything about coffee and you're just like, I'm looking for a good investment opportunity. Starting a coffee shop seems like a good place to put it and you're going to enter into it. But what you don't know is all the things that you don't know, right? And so what we've done with this masterclass is taken behind the scenes how you find your first location, what you need to be thinking about in finding a location. We give you a gift in the masterclass where it's a step-by-step process of how you're opening your coffee shop, the different checkpoints you need from coming up with your plans and talking with the city and then negotiating a lease. And then how do you build a team and what are the different pieces you need to be thinking about? It's a great masterclass, door-to-door, start to finish completely free on opening up your next coffee drive through So check it out. It's at myfirstdrivethru.coffee and it's a great masterclass. You won't regret it. We'll see you on the inside there.